So, you have a little bit of weight that you want to lose. And fortunately, you have done your research and found a diet that is going to get you there. Whether it be keto, paleo, if it fits your macros, or some other fancy diet that I have never even heard of, as long as it conforms to the basic principles that you need, such as having a high protein intake and putting you into a calorie deficit, then it's all good Godspeed. But let's say that you have done all that and it's still not working. Before you guys start freaking out, throwing your entire diet playbook out the window and sitting there frantically looking up hashtag fitness tips on Instagram, <laughs> here are six reasons why your perfectly good diet is not working. Really quick before the video starts, I wanted to let you guys know that right now my protein is having their Black Friday sale, the biggest sale of the year. The entire website is 60% off and you can get even more of a discount on top of that using my code VITVIP. So if you guys need to stock up on anything, check it out, link in the description box below. Okay, so this first one I can guarantee you right off the bat is going to be very difficult for a lot of you to accept. But unfortunately, in my experience, I can confirm as a coach, the number one reason why people's diets aren't working is because they're not following their diets to begin with. Now easy there, before my comment section is flooded with a hundred hangry keyboard warriors. That's bullshit, you're stupid, I'm the best at tracking, my mom said so. It's not my fault, haven't you ever heard of genetics? Stop fat shaming me you son of a bitch. Calm your ass down, because in this case, you're not exactly alone. For example, in the UK, the BBC reported that based on national statistics, that over a third of UK adults underestimate their calorie intake. British men eat over 3,000 calories on average while claiming to only eat about 2,000, and British women followed similar suit claiming to only eat 1,500 while in reality consuming over 2,500. This is a similar case in Australia where studies have shown a similar problem and one that is only worsening over the past 20 years. And let's be honest, the rest of the world ain't doing that much better. Looking at you, America. And the crappy thing is that, look, this is the answer that nobody, including some of my clients, nobody wants to hear this. Everybody assumes that when their diet stops working, they need something radically new and different. They need a new special diet, a super secret over expensive new training program, some magic supplement peddled to you by some shirtless douchebag on Instagram. This is why when it comes to legit scientific studies pertaining to nutrition, unfortunately self-reported food logs or food diaries are about as reliable as girls who put curvy in their Tinder profiles. Now this problem usually sneaks its way into your diet in two different ways. The first and most basic option is simply not tracking stuff. I can't tell you how many times as a coach where I will look at someone's food log and it'll say something like lunch, six ounces of chicken breast, 10 ounces of pasta. That's it. That, that's it. And I always kind of think to myself like, really, Re really, really, you didn't have any pasta sauce. You didn't have any sauces on the chicken. We're talking ketchup, barbecue sauce, absolutely nothing. You didn't cook with any oils. You didn't have any beverages. You didn't have any dessert, nothing, nothing at all. Not even like a little leftover Halloween candy chocolate bar. All you did is sit there and eat a chunk of chicken in a bowl of plain pasta like it's 16th century Britain. Are you sure about that? And then the second option, the slightly more sneaky version is something which I like to call the spoon problem. Let's say you're you know, eating peanut butter and you log in my fitness pal one spoon. But the problem is, is it one spoon or was it one spoon? Let me make this very clear. Whenever you are eating something which comes in the form of teaspoon or tablespoon or cup or any other quantity which is subjective in any way, your brain, if you've been dieting long enough and if you're hungry enough, will literally trick you into eating two or even three times more than that while still convincing yourself that you did a good job and had this single 90 calorie spoon or serving of whatever it is that you are eating. But the problem is with higher calorie density foods, we're talking things like peanut butter, honey, uh, Nutella. These are the kind of foods where it's very easy to underestimate by you know, upwards of 100 calories per meal. And if you have these two or three times throughout the day, this alone can take you out of a calorie deficit and effectively ruin your diet for that entire day. Trust me guys, I know that this is annoying and it's tedious and it's not something that maybe many of you would wanna hear in this video, but it matters. And if you are someone who is having real difficulties with weight loss or dieting, then you need to start being very honest with yourself about these portion sizes. 
this one, I will be honest, for a lot of you out there considering this is a bodybuilding and general fitness channel, this point might be somewhat redundant. But for all of you who may be very new to fitness, very new to weight loss, pay attention to this one because a lot of people, women especially, make this mistake. Don't start out with exclusively and primarily a sole focus on weight loss before you have taken the time to put on any muscle at all. Let me give you a fantastic example that kind of illustrates what I am saying. I found both of these kind of like body composition analysis online, but what's really interesting about this case is that these two women, from a basic standpoint, are very similar. They're almost identical in age, identical in height, but the weird thing is that besides that being an equal height and weight, they burn pretty different amounts of calories on a daily basis. Their basal metabolic rate, their metabolisms differ by almost 110 calories. So why is that? Because if you dig a little deeper, the second one, Sarah, she actually has a considerably higher lean body mass coming in at almost what is it that's uh, yeah, 11 pounds more lean body mass with the majority of that, in this case over seven pounds, coming from muscle mass. Body fat just sits there as an energy storage mechanism. God forbid you're ever stranded on a deserted island for three months and you need to quickly burn you know, energy storage to use as calories. Whereas muscle, on the other hand, the main function of muscle is to do things, is to provide heat, is to provide mechanical force, allowing your body to move. Muscle burns energy, fat is energy. So the moral of the story is that for a lot of you out there, especially beginners, especially women, don't just exclusively focus on starving yourself and trying to decrease body fat and body weight and that's it, paying attention to nothing else. Don't avoid exercise, don't avoid excessive protein intake, not just because it's great to build muscle, but because it's going to make your overall process of fat loss significantly faster and easier. This next one is a situation which I occasionally have as a coach. I will have a client who comes to me and they can't lose weight. You know, the fat is not really coming off. And so naturally the first thing I do is I look at their, their macronutrients, their calories, their quantitative variables, and everything looks fine. So this is where it's a little weird because like on paper you should be losing weight but you're not for weeks at a time so what the hell is going on? Then I'll dig a little deeper. I'll go beyond the numbers and I'll start to look at their actual individual foods that they track on a daily basis and I will realize that they are eating nothing but chicken fingers, carrot sticks and Diet Coke like you're a three year old kid during snack time. I had a guy and I don't know how but this guy somehow managed to fit a diet consisting of nothing but pizza, six scoops of protein powder in a single day, and I shit you not, zero servings of fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. Somehow he made this magically conform to his macros. Look, at its core, yes, the very fundamentals of metabolism and, and body composition and overall weight loss are simply energy balance and macronutrient intake. That being said, just because they are the two main factors does not mean they are the only factors in this equation. There are still secondary factors at play, things such as micronutrient profile, protein frequency, digestibility, fiber intake, but there are other things besides just the very basics. All factors which are completely ignored when you somehow make absolute garbage fit into your diet like a world record game of Tetris. So let's say you go for a run and you are a relatively heavy guy, let's say you're 200 pounds, in just 30 minutes you can burn a pretty substantial amount of calories. We're talking upwards of four or even 500. Now, a lot of people out there incorrectly assume, and oftentimes it's unfortunately confirmed by their various fitness trackers, apps, or all these other gizmos, that if they work out in the gym, you know, do a regular strength training workout, that they are going to burn a similar number of calories. This is bullshit. Now, maybe this would be the case if you were doing very high intensity, high speed, you know, circuit style strength training, kind of like CrossFit. But for the majority of you out there, if you're like me and your workouts are kind of more typical standard, you know, three sets of 10, three to four minutes of rest in between sets, I'm telling you right now, chances are you're not really burning more than 250, 300 calories 
at the most. For example, there was a study from Arizona State University which estimated that a typical individual will burn around 8.5 calories per minute when doing push-ups, or 514 calories per hour. Uh, the only problem is who the fuck does push-ups for an hour straight? When I see people doing like 45 minutes of moderate strength training, which let's be honest boils down to a solid 12 minutes of actively moving and lifting, then they subsequently go and put 500 calories burnt in their MyFitnessPal, so now this justifies them going and having a Big Mac for lunch. I am sitting here thinking, what the fuck? <laughs> So some of you guys believe that when you search up a food in MyFitnessPal or any other food app for that matter, that all of the entries you see there were specifically put in there by really smart app developers or food researchers or some other experts who have crossed the I's, dotted the T's and done their research. The majority of the food entries you see in these apps are user created. You can do this yourself. Just go into your app and then like there should be a setting where it says create food and then you can put in whatever macros and calories you want and then afterwards people out there who are searching for the same thing can use your entry in their food diaries. Now, considering we live in a world where almost a quarter of the population literally believes the sun revolves around the earth. You may want to double check a few of those food entries you are going to be using, particularly if they are going to be common diet staples. Guys, I can't tell you how many times I've searched up something really basic, like, like pasta, for example. And then on the surface, when you're searching for it, everything looks fine. But then if you dig a little deeper, you realize that it doesn't make any sense. Either the macros don't add up with the calories or macros have been forgotten, or maybe it's some other clusterfuck of a problem altogether. Guys, the point is that if there are foods which you are going to be using repetitively on a weekly basis, I'm not saying you have to do this with every single piece of food you ever track, even if you do it once a year, no. But if there are common things that you eat, like chicken, rice, you know, bread, pasta, whatever, something which you are going to be using multiple times throughout the week, every week throughout your diet, you may want to take five minutes and double check those numbers against a secondary source. My personal favorites would be something like calorieking.com, nutritiondata.self, or legit, just type it into Google. So if you guys have ever tried to estimate your total daily energy expenditure, which is just a fancy way of saying the amount of calories your body expends or burns on a daily basis, it's maintenance level. You would probably have to, in addition to calculating your absolute basic calorie expenditure, otherwise known as your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, which is pretty much the amount of calories you would expend if you just laid there and did absolutely nothing like a vegetable, you need to take that number and you need to multiply it by something which we call an activity multiplier. This is obviously higher for people who are more active, construction workers, landscapers, obviously like triathlon professional athletes, and it's a lot lower for people doing not much at all. People who work like sedentary desk jobs. The problem is I sometimes encounter people who will count certain things as exercise like I walked to work today. I walked the dog today. My job was kind of difficult because I did, you know, I, I broke a sweat. You were essentially double counting and incorrectly raising your overall estimated metabolism. Pretty much my go-to rule is as follows. If whatever you are doing is not specific, deliberate exercise, do not track that in any food tracking app like MyFitnessPal or anything like that. Even strength training with weights is something that I personally do not recommend tracking in any, you know, food, metabolism, none of this stuff. Because number one, as I mentioned earlier in the video, it doesn't burn all that many calories. And if it's something which you are hopefully doing on a regular basis, well then it's already included in your activity multiplier. It is already included in the original estimation of what your body's total daily energy expenditure is. And you don't wanna double count that stuff. All it's gonna do is give you a false perception of burning more calories than you really did, allowing you to eat more calories than you really should. And guys, that about does it. These are six reasons why your diet may not be working, despite the fact that the diet itself is actually 
pretty good. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate all of you. Make sure to check out my protein for their massive Black Friday sale. This really is the biggest sale. They do it once a year and it it is pretty massive. I mean, I think it's like the entire website is up to 60% off if you need to stock up on absolutely anything or in my personal favorite, my protein clear way, which just launched in a brand new flavor. But besides that, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.